What's up? This is Off Topic. Here to talk about the movie Ant Man. Sitting to my left, got Jonathan, what's up? Padawan Joe, and David. Spoiler alert! If you haven't seen Ant Man, don't watch this video. Because we're going to go into depth with this. So, be prepared. Indeed. You have been warned. You've been warned. So, anyways. Fucking Marvel did it again. As you Joe said. Oh my line. <laughs> now I have nothing to say the rest of the video. Bullshit. <laughs> there is plenty to talk about in the movie. Well, it started off, you know. It didn't start like a normal Marvel film. Nope. Like, the oh, first yeah. thing that usually, like, when everything's dimmed down, you're done with the previews or whatever nonsense the theater's doing. And the first thing that pops up in the movie is dun, 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 and and the, the logo. Page play. Yeah, yeah. It's the logo, and you're. They didn't do none of that. That's like the, no, that's no, the no, moment you're like, oh, ready. Mm -hmm. But it cut right into a scene. They did the whole Marvel, did the little animation with Wolverine and all the Marvel characters going through the Marvel sign, and it went straight to 1989. No, 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 no. It didn't do that animation. Oh, it it did. did the scene first, and then the animation. Then it went to Scott Lang getting punched. That was the order they did it. Well, listen to some cool music. Just saying, they really. Yeah, cool. yeah. It wasn't music. even the Marvel like no. I was just doing, like no, the fun. epic fanfare that everybody kind of grows to love and was my ringtone for a couple months. Um, no, I don't even know the name of the song, but it was <laughs> Mexican it was, music. It was like Carlos Santana music, and so. It's so we all looked at Jonathan. Of course. Jonathan got at home. <laughs> Well, right the rest, home, of, us were, the the rest of us were immigrants in this storyline. <laughs> just two. Four kids? Just two. Just two and a black guy. The rest mm -hmm. are white, crazy white people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, anyways. Yeah, th th that was the first thing that threw, uh, threw me off. But it was a really cool scene. It showed back in 1989, much older Howard Stark, which is not played by Cooper. Where like, I'm used to seeing him now in like uh, Agent Carter. And uh, he popped up in Captain America First Avenger. I, I see him as Howard Stark now, but it looked like they had the same actor from Iron Man 2, from the footage and all that. It looked like the same actor to me. It looked, yeah, just so, white hair. That was it. Yeah. yeah, so we saw him at S.H.I.E.L.D. It, was, it looked young, like the beginning of... younger Hank Pym as well. Yeah, but the place they were at, it didn't say location. All it did was say the year, 1989. But it looked like the Triskelion. Well, yeah. Well, it had it an overview like it had shot. A building that was being like made. Yeah. Was construction. So, so it was so the it beginning kinda, of that uh, Triskelion yeah, and all that. The like, HQ. Yeah, I'm gonna go check out the rest of the Marvel movies just so I can see what that building was. And we saw a, a slightly graying Agent Carter, mm -hmm. who we all know was one of the founding members of Shield, mm -hmm. after her whole debacle and working with the SSR. We got to see that. Basically, hate him coming in and going, "Screw you guys." You trying to go behind my back on my Myself. my research? Mm -hmm. I'm out. Yeah, it's fun. And Howard Stark went. We don't want to make enemies with him. Trust me. I was like, that is a very interesting meeting, beginning. Yeah, he had a good one liner though. Howard Stark. He just beats. He just kicked your ass in normal size. You want to see him in the size of an ant when you can't see him coming? <laughs> yes. That was great. Yeah, he smashed dude's face against the table. Yeah, and that, and that guy. And me and Jonathan both agreed he cleaned up rather quickly. Real like, good. Real quick. Like, moment, like, you know, moment, moment, moment clean. Napkin, no, yeah, but it was even like time. creasing not up into his nose place. in the crevices area too. It was all over the place. Yeah. And then the next shot when it goes back to him, it was all like, clean. Clean. We we really look at him and be like continuity. But Wait hey, to up. but hey, whatever. They made a movie about Ant Man. Only reason why I wanted to see it is because it said Marvel in front of it. Now I want to go watch it again. Oh, and Paul, yeah, you, Paul Rudd. It was that. Good. Yeah, let's let's talk about Paul Rudd let's and Scott Paul Lang. Rudd. First, let's talk about the character Scott Lang. Mm -hmm. Convict. We pick up right on with him. A comedic oh, yeah. convict. Yeah. Very good. Well, it's, oh, it's Paul Rudd. Yeah, it's good. One liners in it, man. Every line is a one liner in that movie. It's yeah, pretty much. Kinda. Oh, yeah, but yeah, Scott Lang is the second Ant Man. Everybody knows from the comics and everything. Mm -hmm. And, of course, even in the comics, he had a daughter who ends up becoming a superhero later on. So, we'll see if they do that. I don't think they will. And, uh, we see him leaving prison. Mm -hmm. Right off the start. In a very comedic way. 
<laughs> yeah, they had <laughs> goodbye rituals or some goodbye shit. Rituals. It's just beating each other up. Uh-huh. Saying, hey, buddy, bye. <laughs> Giving him a scar. Enjoy, enjoy life. <laughs> then he, once he left the prison, he met the funniest character in the entire movie. The guy that stole the whole movie. <laughs> I, I, it's between him and the ants for me. Oh. The ants are, are hilarious. Like the, the, I didn't know I could fall in love with an ant. Oh, and Anthony. I cried a little. We're not talking about Anthony yet. Nope. Yeah, Anthony is Anthony is mine. Mine. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, we got to we got to see Scott Lang, and we learned about his character really quick. That you know he's he's very smart. I mean, he's got a master's degree in electric uh-huh. engineering and all that, and uh, he, he turned to life of crime because things get tough. They even some characters call him out on that. His ex-wife or ex-lover. I'm not sure if she was ex-wife, but you know the mother of his child. She mom. calls she calls him out on Long it, term. and even Hank Pym calls him out on it too. It's like, oh, there you go. When things get tough, you go right off to crime. You go when things get bad, and so we're learning about Scott to where this is what he has to overcome to become the hero. Yeah. But he was convicted of robbing, robbing, <coughs> a burglar. He cleared it. Yeah, up. burglar. Yeah. <laughs> burglar. He said he hates violence. Well, that changed up by the end of the yeah, movie. Yeah, he's yeah. kicking oh, ass yeah. and all kinds well, of different animals. Well, I mean, he was just doing it as a job, but then when it got personal with his daughter, yeah. then he went in there. He, yeah, no, he became a parent. He was like, hey, don't touch my kid. Oh, hell no. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so then we'll talk about Hank Pym. Michael Douglas. Yeah, he... Michael Douglas yeah, sold it as Hank Pym. Yeah. yeah. It seems like he was a better mentor... To Scott Lang than he was the other guy, uh, Darren Cross. Cross. Darren Cross. Yes, Darren, Darren Cross. Darren was Cross turned, was. Well, he had all the ambition of Hank Pym, but the problem was he was taking it to a personal level. He was, he was taking it self gain. Yeah. Instead of the better. Better uh, man. Well, it was a classic like you tell me everything I know, but I'm gonna turn it to evil thing. And yeah. you know it's like, well, I didn't want you to do all this, so now I gotta pull a plug on it, but I created a monster. Frankenstein all over again. And, yeah, kind of sense. Yeah, the Apprentice much. Rises. And, uh, yeah, Hank Pym. What do you do when your apprentice goes bad? Get a new one. Now, I thought it was... <laughs> Trade it was new Hank, model. You know, Hank Pym Industries, right? Uh, Pym Technology? Yeah, Pym Technology. And then he got voted out by Darren Cross and his daughter. And the board of directors. So... She was the, his own daughter. Hope was the deciding, was the deciding vote. vote to kick that, him that, out. That was harsh. Yeah, that's pretty harsh. But when we come in in the film, they were already working together, trying to pull the plug on Darren Cross, mm-hmm. and they and she they finally caught wind of what he was gonna yeah. fully do with the suit and everything. Yeah, he was just gonna take shit over and mess everything up. It it would have been chaos. Yeah. So she went calling Daddy and saying, "Dad, when you get this done." And he's like, yay, family and team. Like the whole movie, she wants the suit. Uh-huh. But the dad needs her to still work with Cross. And that's when Scott Lincoln. That, that's, that's, yeah, that's why they went and got him. And that's why uh, Hank had such great interest in him. That, and he, he's also a, a failing father kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Is, he had the right motivation and had the right skills. And what Scott called out, too, we were all kind of thinking anyways, especially when Hank kept denying Hope the suit. Is he's like I'm expendable. If he loses me, that's not that bad. If he was to lose you, and that all made sense when you, yeah. you're hearing that, you're like, duh. <laughs> now touch on the fact you said uh, mentioning his skills. They talked about how he broke in to the lab. Had one of the hot best. It was said to be un unbreakable security unbreakable system. Security. He broke in without a trace. Gave everybody back their money. Then he goes to Hank Pym's mansion. Oh, he posted them online too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Then he went to Hank Pym's mansion, broke in, disabled everything, got into the safe, found the ant suit, and later we found out it was all a hoax because Hank Pym let him break in. He's it was like a, a the entire test. time. It was a yeah, test. test to see I mean, if he knew his stuff. Hank even admitted he's like the freezing of my locking mechanism. That was pretty clever. Yep. Like. I don't think he expected that. And they brought in a Titanic metal. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> that was a vault within a vault. Remember, the old lady lived because she, she got to tell the jewel back in the old Yeah, they have some great dialogues. His yeah. buddies, that uh, the, his best friend who comes and picks him up, 
the other people that he brings into it and everything, uh, this Russian dude who's a comp- computer hacker kind of guy. T.I. And then yeah, the T.I. Yeah. Movie. T.I. I did not know he would be in this movie. Nope. T.I. did a very... He, did a very he was very hilarious, good. and he was Dave. And I love that character. <laughs> That's the only character's name I remember. The, the secondaries was Dave. His best friend was Michael Pena. Mm-hmm. Is the actor, yeah. and he but had I think it, I, Luis. Was it Luis? Luis, yeah. Luis? Yeah. yeah. It was great. And Actually, he just yeah. told the show. Everybody <laughs> loves his. He's the best storyteller story ever. Story oh, <laughs> they did a cool, really, uh, really cool sequence with that. Is Scott will ask him, "How'd you learn this information?" And his buddy be like, "Okay, so I heard it from so and so and so and so and so and so." The entire time we're seeing that played out. But it's his voice the entire time, not only as an overall narrative, but it's synced up to the mouth of the people that he's speaking about. Each character, whether it be male, female, old all had his voice. And they even did his voice. Yeah, they even did his aneurysms. Like, you know what I'm talking about? And they even did that. Like, picture this cute Asian chick, and she's like, man, I got the hook up. <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> but it was hilarious. <laughs> And uh, we got to see a cameo with uh, Anthony Mackie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They had a Falcon versus Ant Man fight. That in this was. Movie. <laughs> it was very, very short. That was good. But it was a very entertaining, entertaining yeah. fight. It, it was good. I loved it. I, I did not. This is the first time I actually showed the Falcons uh, goggles. Goggles. Oh, yeah, his goggles. And what they could do. And. And he was able to find Ant Man. They targeted the Ant Man. He could he find him. I don't think he could see me. I can see you. Oh. <laughs> He's like, hi, I'm Scott. Yeah. And she's like, did you just say? He just I'm say like, he's Scott. Hi, I'm Scott. <laughs> <laughs> but the fight with Anthony Mackey, the Falcon, was amazing. It was, it was fun. It is at least a good two or three minute fight. Uh huh. Yes. And at the end, it. See, when they were talking about the reason he has to or when he meets up with Falcon is there's a jamming device that Hank def, uh, invented before. He's like, now it's in the custody of Stark Industries. And last that I checked, it was in an old warehouse in upstate New York. The moment I heard upstate New York, I went, mm-hmm. oh, this is going to be good. Because I knew. It's the new Avengers movie. Yeah, yeah it was the one <laughs> where they, the, the, the they, the they didn't know that. So that's when Falcon showed up. He's like, I got an oh. intruder. And he's like, he can't see me. <laughs> And sure enough, what was Scott bragging about afterwards? Like, I beat up an Avenger. He went toe-to-toe with an Avenger. And I lived. And I lived. <laughs> we don't dwell on the past, sorry. Don't dwell on the past. What were some of the best jokes? Oh, I personally, I'd like when to they say... Brought, when they brought up the Avengers. <laughs> yeah. He was like... Our, yeah, our I mean, that was actually what I would say, but someone stole them because that was something. You're welcome. I, I was going to the point <laughs> where they, they were basically quoting like, the basic plot for the um, Ultron movie. Where they're like, oh yeah, the Avengers are too busy, you know, exploding the cities. Or dropping cities dropping on other people. Dropping cities. And said, yeah, that's... Yeah. yeah he's, he was like, if we don't do something now, a lot of people will die. I kind of... First thing I'd say we do is call the Avengers. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. kind of like that part because he's like, why don't you just call the Avengers? He's like, I'm not giving anything more to the Starks. Mm-hmm. Like, it seemed like Hank Pym hated the Starks and he knew about Tony, so he's like, no, no yeah, more Starks. Yeah, mentioned <laughs> Iron Man too. Yeah, he yeah, yeah, mentioned the Iron Man like the Iron Man suit, it's a lot, it's a lot better. It, it's, it's not as uh, cute like the Iron Man suit. That's what he said. Mm-hmm. I'm like a cute. All right. <laughs> uh, well, some of the other good jokes. Because that's one of the best things about a really good film is what you do with all your friends is you quote the best lines from. Well, I think the problem with this movie was it had too many jokes. Yeah. I mean, like, Maybe. It was, well, I don't mean problem as in like oh it was bad. There were some credits I've heard before. Saying like, oh, they didn't like the movie because they were forcing jokes. For me, I felt like most of those jokes held no. off naturally. It was all fluid. And the problem I have is I can't memorize every single joke they made. <laughs> Marvel always does a good oh, job yeah. of humor and excitement yes. together. It, and they, did. they always put humor in the right spot. They always put hum- uh, uh, excitement in the right spot. Now, to me, it seemed like it all started, it all kicked off with Guardians of the Galaxy. That's when all the humor and stuff started coming a lot more. And then Ultron. Well, Ultron you, was hilarious. Well, you can't just do that with any Marvel character. Like, you can't have a Captain America film and then it's just the same level of comedy as what we just watched. Because Captain America is very serious. Exactly. They realize how some how stupid some of their characters are. Yeah, like, but, a, a raccoon yeah. and a tree. Let's just make jokes all day long. Yeah, but exactly. like, well, the Iron Man you, you know, you have you know, him making sarcastic jokes. 
But that's him. Great. When you read the comics, it's that's and, him. And then, but you know, he, to help help Captain America with the comedy relief, he's got Anthony Mackie as Falcon. And Anthony Mackie's Yeah, but that wasn't so, very much. You know, he was there for that scene, and then he popped in with a non-dialogue moment when Luis was telling another story about how he had an interconnection with Falcon looking for a guy for some help. Mm -hmm. And you got to hear Pina's voice over Anthony Mackie going, yeah, you know, I'm looking for a guy, man. All that. And you're just like, oh, my God. Uh, I, I love seeing cameos like that where it helps reassure you it's all one universe. And especially Falcon's best one-liner is, Hey, it'd be very important to me if uh, the cat never finds out about this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cat's in charge, and we we get a better sense of that okay. when he's just like, I don't want Cat to know. Okay. <laughs> now the fight scene between well, them whole the whole scene with them breaking into Cross Court. The heist. The heist. 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 Yeah. GTA. So, uh, that whole scene. It, it just went over so well. They, it was they so got, cool. And the Crown Vic props. The yeah, yeah. T.I. stole Crown Vic. Oh, yeah. And just drove off with <laughs> it. Just just like off it crashed it. Crashed it. Because it. <laughs> it was undercover cops, which one of the cops is the stepfather of Scott Lang's. Or not stepfather, but... Fiancé. Fia mother's fiancé. father figure for, you know... Yeah, but even so, she's like... You know, he gets news on, you know, a lead to find Scott. And she's oh, like, are you looking for my daddy? Well, yeah, I, wa I want to make sure he's safe. I hope you don't find him. <laughs> that girl, in my opinion, actually, it goes between Louise, the aunts, or that little girl. That little girl did a fantastic job of acting. Like, she, you never had a moment where you're like, that's a child actor, and they don't know what to do. She was in it. Like, you don't have any sense of that at all. She's in it. Even in her eyes, you see it. Like, when she's getting tucked in the bed and she's, boom, in the zone. I was like, I'm going to pay attention to this little girl because she's going to pop up again. This is another Dakota Fanning. Where you're just going to be like, oh, my God. Whoa. Sorry. <laughs> We're talking about young <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. And, uh. Speaking of the ants. Ants. Oh. Didn't know they could be this badass. There was four types of ants. Oh, yeah. The crazy ants. Which I love those little guys. They're crazy. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what, I, at the ground. what I love about the crazy ants more than I liked about the other three was every time he interacted with them, did you guys notice the noises they made? Mm -hmm. They're like, <laughs> and it's like, it sounds like kids in a far distance going, playing their best role of the Joker. <laughs> it's from a distance you hear very psychotic people. And I really, really enjoyed that. And then you had the fire ants. Who are really good construction builders and yeah, yeah they help them get to hard to reach places. Yep. Then you have the bullet heads, which were yeah, the fighters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I hate Primary to get hit by, bit by one of them. And then Anthony comes in. Spoiler alert: Anthony died. Oh, he got shot. One of the first Quiet, desert eagle. Yeah. Unnecessarily, the one death in this movie was the best. Everybody's his, favorite character. Everybody's <laughs> favorite ant. Yeah. It was his winged. And, and he actually named it. It had a number designation. And he's like, you know what? No, you are Aunt Funny. <laughs> yes. And we all looked at him because if you guys don't know, Junior's real name is Anthony. <laughs> so the better describe the way Anthony died was if you ever played Super Mario Bros. and you have a big old bullet coming at you and you can't get out of the way, <laughs> that's what happened. Boom. That's a pretty good. That's a, graphic. that's a bonus point right there. It, it, it was, was super sad though to watch that his oh, wing yeah, that got set. I half kind of expected at the end of the film when everything was said and done, you see uh, just a uh, perfectly fine Anthony without a wing. But that didn't it happen, and it broke our heart. <laughs> yep, never came back. No, he didn't come back. Didn't go. But one ant that doesn't have a name got enlarged. And became everybody's favorite ant. And became <laughs> the new family pet, which was yeah. another one of the best jokes. When that ant scurried out of the house, this fucking big scurried out of the house. Was it T.I.'s character? No, it was the other cop. Yeah, it was the cop. It was the other room. cop. If you ever seen Remember the Titans, he was one of the linebackers. I don't know his name, but he was the black dude. <laughs> it was, was that guy, and he had a cool line. He's like, whoa, that's one weird looking dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. And they then, made a huge ginormous Thomas the Train because if y'all remember seeing the trailer 
Dope. They had the fight scene around the train mm-hmm. set, mm-hmm. and well, he threw one room. of those. He has these discs. One was red for small, yep, and one was blue for enlarged. And he threw the enlarged one, and it hit the train, and the train got broke bigger, through the and wall. It broke through the entire top half of the house. See, and fell down into the yard, and everybody's like, "What the hell?" The the way the whole scene added up to all that, the heist basically, it was uh, Peanut. Saw the show again when he was getting in as a security guard, knocking everybody out. Mm-hmm. That, it, it was awesome. You know what he wanted to kind of reminded me of? Romeo from Boondock Saints 2. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It kind of reminded me of that moment, too. I agree to that. <laughs> and he's like, we're the good guys now, right? Yeah. It feels kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, he even weird. went back for the security guard that he knocked out. Or else he would have died. You saw that explosion yeah. and it imploded. Yeah. yeah. The security guard. No, I thought it was just going to be like Dark Knight, goodbye ho- uh, hospital yeah. kind of explosion. No. Yeah. Boom, 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 destruction. Holy shit. And then, like, follow yeah. back up. Now, I did not know. I kind of figured they were going to bring up the Avengers, but oh, I did yeah. not know they were going to bring Hydra into it. So when they yeah, Hydra's Hydra, still around. There was a little name drop of Hydra. They were Yellow Jacket, by oh, the no. way, is the villain. Yeah. If you didn't know that, he was uh, trying to we... sell the Yellow Jacket suit to Hydra. Yeah, actually, the highest bidder, and then turned out to be Hydra. The, the thing that got me... They don't know what they used to be, don't worry. Between the two, <laughs> Ant-Man and Yellow Jacket, I prefer Yellow Jacket. Just, just a suit. He looks better than Ant-Man. He also flies, too. Yeah, he's got, yeah like, he's got a jetpack. He doesn't need an ant to fly. So, yeah. but I mean, we like Yellow Jacket. Yellow Jacket is supposed to be a fly. Uh, let's talk about Easter eggs. Did you catch any? Because there's one particular one I want to mention. Didn't see a lot of Easter eggs. I saw a lot of product placement. There was a humongous lifesaver when they were fighting in the suitcase. Big old iPhone in the suitcase. Yeah. That was hilarious. That was a cool scene. I will disintegrate you. Now playing this uh, really? Disintegration by The Cure. <laughs> Uh, okay, well then, if you guys don't have any Easter eggs that caught your eye, uh, I'd like to mention when Louise is doing his little spiel at the end, and he's talking about Anthony Mackie's looking for a guy to help him out. And the girl's like, what kind of guy are you looking for? We got a bunch of guys. We got a guy that jumps. We got a guy that swings. We got a guy who climbs walls nowadays. What you looking for? Yep. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yep. Biggest right there. That is right there, and it fits walls. perfectly into Civil War. Mm-hmm. I heard climb walls, but... Yeah, it went into our... We got a guy who jumped. I didn't even think about it. I remember hearing it, but I didn't oh, yeah. even think about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I caught remember, it. I looked at David and Theodore, and we looked at each other. Mm-hmm. 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 And uh, that, that was the coolest Easter egg, in my opinion. Even though it was a name drop, kind of like back when uh, we watched Winter Soldier, and then they're like, uh, you, Bruce Banner, Stephen Strange. And we're like... It might not be an Easter strange. egg, but yeah. Wasp is in this movie for a very... Short, short period. moment. She yeah. she died well, saving. Yeah. yeah, it or was. She died disarming a bomb. That was missile. sent at the U.S. from the USSR. That was cool. I mean, why would you hide that kind of secret for so long, though? I mean, she's an adult now. You could have told her. But you know, yeah, it's part of the story. Poor parenting. That was the main part of the, the whole story. But Lesson yeah. learned from this film. <laughs> poor parenting. Poor parenting. Yes. Yeah. Will cause world destruction. And it, it's, it's true. You can't. I want to say bad parenting because he meant the best for her the entire time. He just yeah. he, he didn't know how to be a parent. He didn't know how to agree with it because as soon as she died, he came back. She said she didn't see him for two weeks. And when he finally came back to her, he sent her off to boarding school. He did explain that reasoning though, because he said right after that, I spent the next ten years learning everything I could about quantum dimension. He was trying to bring her back. back. Bring her back. Yeah, apparently if you mess with the regulator on the suit and you can, you, you go to an, a subatomic level to where you will actually not only go between molecules and atoms, but you will continue to shrink to where space and time and everything is all one and the same. And nothing every, is relevant anymore. And nothing's relevant and you're in a state of limbo in a sense of in, in physics. And you watch that. You actually watch him go so far down that he even goes right through an atom. And the atom, it becomes a, an imaginary world at that point with diamonds and everything. And I kind of have expected like an infinity stone to pop in front of him that existed in that plane. And he'd be like, what's that? And then 
I need to get out of here. And he gets out of there, and then boom. What is this? I half expected that. But I was thinking, it was like, wait, what are the remaining stones? I couldn't process it. So and I still can't process it. All he did was right use now. the blue and large disc. Yeah. To his uh, belt. One will pop up and so will I. Well, of course. Yeah, pretty much. You have to, because not long after that, Infinity War starts. Mm-hmm. Getting closer and closer, gentlemen. Mm hmm. Can't worry. I'm kind of glad, though, that Thanos had no tie in, not even in the end credit scenes, yeah. because Ant Man's still kind of by himself. The little tie in with the Avengers, which was just Falcon, really. Was good. Yeah, there was no other event. There was not even any mention of any other Avengers. Was there? Or Cap. Well, mm-hmm. except for Cap. Tony. Yeah. yeah. With yeah. that being said, let's talk about the end credit scenes. All right. Yeah, There's two. Two of them, people. Yeah. So don't leave the theater right away. Yeah, just take the two. There was a few yeah, people yeah, in the theater early. Wait. We laughed at them. <laughs> you have to wait like the 10 first minutes. one. The first okay. one is always like traditional Marvel films. Now it'll pop up after the top billing. That means you see the director, the producer the main producers, the main actors, and they will show the title one more time, and then it goes to blank. That's the first time it will show you an end credit scene. And the first one was just Hank Pym escorting his daughter Hope through their basement lab, whatever, and into a hidden closet, popped open for her, and he's like... The new wasp suit. Yeah, yeah. Wait, or Dragonfly, I think I heard somebody say. Was that you? That. Somebody said Dragonfly. I'm saying new wasp suit. I was like, I've never heard of Dragonfly. I mean, I could do some research, but I've always known Wasp. So Hope will now be fighting along with Ant Man. Well, she's gonna now, cause come on, she's yes. like, it's about damn time. Like even Hope was all cocky like that, and you're like, and damn. And she she was really disrespectful to her father for grabbing Paul Rudd and kissing him like that. That was really rude. <laughs> <laughs> she should not have done that. Nope. Although Scott was full of shit. I'm glad though it didn't do the whole. Stereotypical. Well, they won't say anything. No, 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 no. I mean, the stereotypical is just like, I'm about to go into danger. This is probably my last chance to kiss you. Right? Uh, I hate that stereotypical thing. It happens. I'm only like, oh my gosh, okay, whatever. This one, it never really even shows you. It doesn't even show. I mean, she grows to like him a little to where respects him and trusts him. Has a hint of a moment, like after she just beat his ass for training. Mm -hmm. He's dealing with some wounds on him. He's shirtless. And she's like, mm hmm. I never, I never, I never thought Paul Rudd was gonna be that great. That was yeah, crazy. I was impressed by that. Man. But think about it: what Marvel's done to the actors in the past. <laughs> yeah. Chris Evans. But Chris Pratt for one. Chris, Chris, Chris Pratt for Chris sure. Pratt. Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt went was from fat. They got too many Chris He yeah. was fat. <laughs> Chris Pratt, Chris Hemsworth, Chris Evans. Well, yeah, I'm sure there's more. There's Somewhere. probably more Chris's to come. But Thank you, money maker. If you look at Chris Pratt, <laughs> he was back in movie 43 where he. Was in the, uh, oh, he was in Community, movie. too, wasn't he? Or Parks and Recreation, my bad. But he was fat in that movie, and then all of a sudden Guardians comes out, and he's ripped his shit. Oh, no, no, right before that was uh, Delivery Man with Vince Vaughn. And he played his lawyer best friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think Crimson is worth the biggest, man. That dude is, <clears throat> that dude is massive. And I don't know when we're going to see him next. Is it going to be right in the rock, or is he going to pop into Civil War? Don't know. They already say they got a bunch of people coming in oh, yeah. to Civil War. Well, we saw photos on set with... Paul Rudd showed up. Ant-Man. Scarlet Witch showed up. I think Black Panther's going to be in there, too. Isn't He's Elizabeth supposed Olsen. to, yeah. Mm-hmm. Elizabeth Olsen Falcon was there. Falcon will probably be in there. Who? Falcon. Well, Falcon. yeah, that's a given. Yeah, he has to be in there. Black, Black Widow's going to be in there. Bucky. Bucky. Which now brings us back to our second in credits snip bit. And we see Bucky. Winter Soldier. Looks totally dazed and confused kind of sense. And his metallic arm is kind of like jammed up into some kind of machine. Looks like a magnet. It's giant huge, magnet huge prong magnet. thing. And they're like, what do we do? Who do we call? Let's get Tony. No, let's not get Tony. Let's get some other backup. No, 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 no. It's just us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Anthony Mackie goes, well, I know a guy. Which, that was kind of the sense of the whole movie to begin with. So, of course... I think it is, I'm thinking it is everything like at the end when Louise is telling his last story about someone's looking for someone to help and he's connected to the Avengers and we see Anthony Mackie. I think it's kind of chronologically out of order, but that's what that means and thus explaining why Ant-Man will pop up in Civil War and eventually become an Avenger. Well, at the end of that second, and uh, it was like, uh, it even says Ant-Man will return. Yep. Oh yeah. Boom, right down the screen, so. 
Ant Man will return. Like you know Whoever he's is. looking for, she she uh, the reporter announces Spider Man off right off the bat, like you said, swinging around. But is is he looking for Ant Man to get revenge on him, or? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, what I get the sense is, the reason he was hunting for him is because he needs his help. Which we then later see why he needs his help because of Bucky. Maybe there's something that only somebody who could get this storm can do to help you Bucky in some way. I don't know. We'll find out next year with Civil War. I guarantee it. Marvel's never gonna have something close-ended where you'd be like, duh. Like they fixed things even in their one shots, like the whole Mandarin thing. People were pissed off about Mandarin wasn't really Mandarin. Didn't care about Ryan. But guess what? They've gone and fixed that with All Hail the King. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember seeing that. They fixed that where they're like, no, the Ten Rings is real, and you took the name of somebody who wants it back, and Trevor's like, I still don't know who you're talking about. They even fixed the whole uh, Ross and uh, Abomination and everything in one shot. Where they they talk about they originally wanted Obama. Like like remember when Iron Man or I mean Incredible Hulk happened and then the end credit scene is Tony showing up in the bar to talk to General Ross. He's like I hear you have a problem. Well we're putting together a team. Okay. If you think about that and then everything that followed afterwards, you're like that never came to flu uh, fruitation. You know that was a a pointless cliffhanger. It got us excited but it never went in that direction. Maybe they changed their mind. They even fixed that in one of the one shots where they're like. We need somebody to disturb Ross. You know, piss him off. We'll send Tony. They even fixed that. And then... Yeah. They're always signed up for the sin. Yeah, so Marvel's actually playing it very well. And after watching this movie, I feel bad for DC. Yeah. Because Ant-Man turned out good. The only thing going wrong for Marvel that I can say personally is Spider-Man. They re They're re-rolling his character again for the third time. That's the only problem I have with Marvel. Other than that, Marvel's still the best. It's not even Marvel's fault. Nope. It's not. Sony had it for all that time. Yeah. Sony was That's high. all Sony. <laughs> Again, biased opinion. Sony's messing everything up. Get out. In the, the movie world. universe. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, but recently, David and myself, we did a review of the Batman vs. Superman trailer and mm -hmm. the Suicide Squad trailer. Uh -huh. Those yep. movies look good, but... Now that Ant Man is here and we've we watched it, it. DC oh, yeah. is even even further behind. Very bright, very colorful movies, and like even that, further behind. It almost and feels like different genres too. Very different. You got your super action yeah. Winter Soldier, you got your space fantasy, and sci fi, and sci -fi and all that, and you got your comical action mm -hmm. Ant Man. They made a movie about Ant Man, people. If they Batman, did, it's if, here. <laughs> There's Batman nothing we can do. Superman does not sell right. I think DC is gone. DC, I even think if it does DC good, it's not. They're not going to catch up now. They they made Ant Man. Come on, Marvel's in Phase Three. <laughs> this was the first of Phase Three. Oh gosh. So Civil War next July, am I right? May. Next May. May. Next May. But so. the next one will be Fantastic Four as far as Marvel goes. Well, not the MCU. Not the MCU, but it's still but Marvel. But Marvel, next Marvel movie's next month, and that'd be Fantastic Four. Well, you bet your ass we're going to do a review on that. Oh, yeah. We're cutting into more time than we wanted, but if you're watching now, you've toughed it out with us. Thank you. And uh, I hope you enjoyed our review, off topic, not just David and Joe this time, of Ant-Man. Mm -hmm. Go see it. Yeah. It, it, waste your time. You know, you. <laughs> If you were hesitating before, don't hesitate now. You'll, a lot of fun. You'll enjoy it. There's great comedy, great action, uh, great character characterization. You know, you, you see these people not only develop, but you learn about their past too, and not even having to show us the past. So it was pretty great. Uh, great work with Peyton, the director. And if you're one of the people who think Paul Rudd would not make it as a superhero, you're dead wrong. Oh, yeah. Was, he had the voice, too. Like, we couldn't see him talking. We got the mask and all that, and he had his little one-liners during the battle and all that. And while the heist sounded great to me, I was happy with it. The next question is, can this new Spider-Man pull off the same kind of jokes and style and sarcasm and all that as well I saw from Andrew Garfield, which I thought he hit right on the money. That's how Spider-Man is. 
that's the next question. But uh, we'll, we'll be able to answer that next year. Seems like a ways away, but we'll still be around, and we love you guys very much. Thank you for tuning in. Like, share, share subscribe, and comment at the bottom. Actually, yeah. Comment. I want to comment or of your favorite quotes from this movie. If you've gone and seen it, quote it right now. Because we'll quote right back. We like to reply. We reply all the time. Thank you. This was David. Padawan Joe. Jonathan. And Junior. Thank <laughs> you.